So thank you. Yeah, thank you for um, the introduction. And um, yeah, thank you for having me here. Berlin's wonderful. I love drinking beer, so yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, so I will talk about uh, something that is um, not exactly data science. It's more like a depth of thing. So how many of you here identify yourself like me as a data scientist or data analyst or you know, use Python for data things? Ooh, good, good. Uh, how many of you are like, you know, Python developers and more like a development side and, you know, um, yeah. So probably, yeah, uh, it's a mix of background, but this talk will be, you know, suitable for everybody, so it's good. Um, okay. So uh, I'll briefly introduce myself. Uh, thanks for the introduction, but I'll talk a little bit more. Uh, I work in Hotel Best now, and um, I'm also organizing an AI club for gender minorities because I uh, really want the diversity in the business because uh, I've seen a lot of ladies. They have very good potentials, but they are just like sometimes a bit scared to you know um, to pursue for their career. So uh, the, the the club is really helping. Um, so we have a good community, and also I'm a member of the Python Sprint. So what are we doing? Is uh, we are conscious building to the open source project, which is the, the reason why you're here, right? Like, because you're learning about open source libraries and Python is an open source project. So, um, yeah, so please support open source. And also, uh, I've contributed to uh, Pandas and also Date Util. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, go to, you know, I think tomorrow there's a session about how to contribute your first open source um, contribution. So please attend that and you'll love it. <laughs> and also, my colleague want me to just give a little uh, you know uh, about our, we are hiring. So uh, if you are like, if you are a data, you know, person, and you know, um, you want to work for BI and data analytics, we are going to hire a lot of, um, you know, um, data scientists, data engineer. So even though if you are, you know, a technical, um, data, you know, data engineer, like please um, pay attention and or talk to me afterwards. So. Okay, I won't spend too much time introducing myself and my company. Um, so now let's talk about the, um, the things I want to talk about today. Uh, who knows about Docker, right? Who used Docker before? You used Docker before, yeah? Good, so you already know about Docker, uh, which for me is always, you know, I remember it by the cartoon um, image of a whale with the boxes. So basically what it represents is like, we can ship our app, our application and whatever we, we did, like in an environment that is the same everywhere. We don't have to worry about it works on my computer, but not work on my colleague or the user's computer. And also uh, it's like a VM, but it's not a VM because it's very lightweight. So um, it's, it's perfect for its job. So uh, there's a lot of users using it now, and it's very popular. Uh, OK, that's Docker. But uh, what about Terraform? Uh, who heard about Terraform? Good. Uh, so yeah, uh, Terraform is an infrastructure as code. So uh, basically what it does is uh, uh, I would make it brief. So for example, if you, we are using a cloud platform, like uh, for example, AWS or GCP or Sora, we have to, you know, when we launch an instant, uh, we have to set up all the settings, right? Uh, how big we want, like which region we want to use it. And maybe for example, uh, in, in my case, I would use GPU. So I have to uh, add the GPU accelerator for the, uh, if I'm using GCP. So, um, so all these settings a bit, you know, um, sometimes, you know, we make mistake, right? We forgot, oh, we forgot to add something in or the size is not the right size. It's too small for my job. And um, so that's why it's good to have it as code. So we can, um, you know, uh, check or what have we done wrong. It's like we can debug it very easily because every, everything is just there in a page. And also it's very good for, you know, you can kind of um, reuse it and we, you can show it to your colleagues and things like that. So uh, how do I know about it? Because I'm a data scientist, I'm not a, you know, a that one person, uh, but uh, I always believe that, you know, um, as a data scientist, we have to uh, always keep learning and uh, learn new tools to help your job or help whatever project you're working on. So I had a, uh, overcome a challenge before because uh, I'm, you know, um, studying on Coursera and there is a course about uh, deep learning, which uh, there was an assignment that, you know, um, they, they're very nice. They already put it there saying, if you are using you know, a, a CPU to, to train it, it would take seven hours for each, like, each time you run it. So, but of course, we have to tune the hyperparameters and all these like, try and error. So seven hours is too much. I only have, you know, like the deadline is tomorrow, so no. 
so I'm thinking, oh, maybe um, I could use a GPU. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for a solution, like, uh, okay, uh, do I have a GPU in, of course, every, every laptop have a GPU, right? Well, graphical unit, so look it up. It's, uh, oh, my GPU is not um, NVIDIA, it's, it's Intel or something like that, uh, but, uh, you know, TensorFlow love NVIDIA. I don't know why it doesn't work that well with Intel, and I haven't figured out an easy way to work with that. So, um, okay, I have to get an NVIDIA G, uh, GPU. Uh, I, I look it up on eBay or something. It's very expensive. <laughs> it's it's two hundred to to a thousand pounds. It's like it's only for a homework that is like you know deadline is tomorrow and I, I won't you know I can't buy it. It's like too expensive and I didn't get it in time. So I think the best solution is to go to cloud, cloud platform, right? So um, uh, my company is using AWS, um, but I mean I, I I'm always a Google person, and you know I use a lot of Google Docs and things. So um, yeah, maybe I will look have a look at the GPUs, uh, GCP. So um, I will look at it, and actually it's not that expensive, and they give you free credit to try it out. So yeah, why not? Um, yeah, but at the end, uh, as a side note, at the end I have to pay uh, uh, in, like beforehand before I can use their GPU, but you know, um, it's okay. Uh, so uh, also, um, it's, uh, there's also a challenge because uh, the Coursera, when we submitted the homework, they have, they, you know, they have lots of students worldwide, right? So they have a, a robo grader that they're doing AI, come on, like <laughs> they have a robo grader who is um, grading your homework, but it's, it's very picky, like if it's not the same environment, it will, you know, mm, it will just like, some, sometimes it gives you zero marks for no, no reason, you, 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 you're sure that you're, cor you're correct, but it just gives you zero marks, so you don't want that to happen. Uh, fortunately, the TA in that course, they're very nice, they, you know, created, you know, a, a Docker image that, you know, the environment's got to be the same, so Docker is saving the day now, um, but um, I just need some adjustment because I want to use the GPU. Uh, it's okay. Actually, if I look at that, you know, I, I pulled that from the their uh, Git um, GitHub, and then the you know I, I changed the Docker file a little bit. I used the GPU version instead of the the CPU version, so it's fine. Okay. Um, so uh, I have uh, I have a plan now. Uh, so how to how to execute it? Um, so first, I have to write a Terraform script. So uh, okay, as I start using Terraform, and now I'm in love with it. And of course, you have to install it first, and then you have to get the um, Google API key. Uh, Google is like um, very nice. Like you can. You don't have to set up like too complicated. The only thing you have to set up is to use, you know, to download that uh, API key, and also you have to set up the SSH to to the project. So it, it's it's very easy. Like for me, even though I'm not like you know a, a very um, developer person, then I can still do it. It's fine. Um, and also, I have to write a startup script because um, when I launch the instance, I have to tell it to you know, oh, install the driver for the GPU. Uh, also, you know, install Docker and run that Docker image on the Docker Hub. So um, I have to um, you know write that script, uh, which is a, sh a shelf script. It's not too hard if you use Linux or something. Um, and also, you have to build a Docker image. As I said, I did some customization, I have to use the, the GPU version instead. So um, I have to uh, download the Docker file, I build my own image, and put it there um, on the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the, the Docker, they have a Docker Hub, it's like GitHub, basically. But uh, you can also set it up to link with your uh, GitHub, if you have a repo there, it will build the image from your uh, GitHub repo every time you update it. So it's auto automated build, so it's, it's super cool. I found it is like a super cool feature because it will always be up to date. You don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to build it and upload it again. So um, yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, uh, so when I launch, uh, when I type the, you know, I'll show you later like how I did it. I type it, you know, uh, with Terraform. I just type Terraform, apply. But when I type it, what's actually going on? So uh, what's happening is that the, there's a script in Terraform which kind of, um, say that you know all this, this information how i want to set up my instance is already stored there so um it will use the script to you know tell the api what to do like what how to set it up so google api got that script and it will launch the ins instance according to the structure that i set up in the terraform script so it will uh, launch the instance 
At the same time, it will run the startup script, the script that I write, uh, which uh, hopefully I have time to show you. Um, it will be, you know, uh, install the driver and install the Docker and all these things. And um, and I, afterwards, because like it's, it's after it install Docker, then it will, you know, um, it will uh, run the image. We're like you have used Docker, then you understand like uh, what's going on. Like uh, it will just. So you, your your application is in the Docker image, and now it's like after all the script telling it to get it from Docker Hub, it was just like put your application there, like it's like a you have a, a something and put it in the box. It's running, it's good, and um, yeah. And then afterwards, then you can uh, because the Docker image actually is uh, is a Jupyter um, notebook, so um, and it. You can customize it. Actually, uh, there's a lot of you know different Jupyter notebook uh, on on uh, Docker Hub. So uh, there's a lot of official ones. Like for example, if you're using SciPy, they have one for SciPy. You know, if you're using um, you know uh, Deep Learning, they have the TensorFlow one. And if you're doing something very simple, you want to customize it yourself, you can download the minimal one and customize it yourself. So um, you can look it up on the uh, the, the Docker Docker Hub. So um, yeah, the the Jupyter notebook will be running. You can just access the Jupyter notebook using the um, the IP address, or if you want to be fancy, you can have a, your own domain name, right? But uh, I, I'm not that fancy. I'm just used the the, the yeah the IP address. Okay, so uh, why like why doing all this? Like it's you know there's a pipeline and all these things. Oh, why am I doing it? Why why I can't just you know just click 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 and then I have it running and that's fine. Uh, not really, because as I said before, it's very easy to make mistakes. You maybe you forgot, oh, what did I do last time? Oh, I forgot. So it's better to have it in the code. And also, when you're like writing a blog, a tutorial, or whatever, or teaching a friend, it's like, um, okay, uh, then your friend will be like, they they don't know what they have done, right? So it's like, oh, look at my mistake, and then you'll be like, uh, I don't know what you have done. So, <laughs> so yeah, you, it's better to have it uh, in a, in a written down, so um, you can check it what's wrong. Yeah, so it's like uh, no hidden things. It's uh, not. It's very easy to spot the mistakes, and um, yeah, it's easy to start ov all over again. Like for example, if I uh, the there's a Jupyter notebook, right? So, for example, if I did something wrong, I, I screw up the setting or whatever, I want to start it all over again. So I can just, you know, launch the instant again, pull the image again, so everything will go go back to what it what it was. And also, if for example, if you started a project and you work on it for two or three days, you want to put it down for a while, like you can save all these things, but you want to shut down the instance. The next time you want to like, um, or maybe after a month, you want to oh, run it again to like to pick it up from there, then you can you know, um, launch it again. You don't have to, you know, oh, what did I do before? And now everything's here, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, um, I have lots of time, so I can do a demo. <laughs> and yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, basically the, the demo I do will be um, uh, from my um, GitHub. So uh, yeah, so you can uh, kind of go to my GitHub. Uh, I'll show you the link afterwards. I'll upload the slide so you, you, you'll be able to access, access it. And I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah, my VM is a bit slow. Oh yeah, because I'm using Windows 7 uh, and Docker don't like Windows 7, so I have to use Docker on a VM, which is a bit weird, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and now it's shouting at me for whatever reason, okay. That's the danger of a live demo, right? <laughs> okay, so what's in here, in the direction? Actually, there's, uh, oh, it's too, too, too dark. Uh, is it, it's, too small, it's too small, okay. Uh, there's not much I can do about it. Um, okay, uh, maybe. Oh, good. I don't use it that much. You can you can tell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Woo. Okay. Uh, look at this. Like uh, we have. Is it okay? It's okay now. Yeah. So uh, we have three files. The only three f files that you need for this demo. The other thing doesn't matter. Like. You only need this three to start with. You need a Terraform file, you know, something.tf, and then you need that JSON file that I talk about. Remember, I talk about there's a Google API, you know, um, login detail. 
it's got to be there. So uh, that one, it won't be on the GitHub because like you have to have your own uh, login detail. I won't share mine. The hackers alert, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and also um, startup script. That's the script that I write for you know um, pulling the Docker and all these. Uh, for the demo, I don't use the GPU because it would take a longer time to run the GPU instant and it costs you more. So no, <laughs> it's just a demo. So, uh, but it would do what it what the startup script would do for this one. It's like it would pull the um, the uh, it would download Docker and also pull the Docker image. So yeah. Okay. So now I have the Terraform script. I have installed. Uh, Oh, sorry, the, yeah, the Terraform script, and I've installed Terraform before. So what you have to do is only like Terraform init. So it's it's like your you know uh, Git repo. You can like init it first. So um, yeah, it's downloading plugin. Uh, I hope the internet is fine. Yep. So it's it's good. It know that it's a uh, Google because maybe uh, it, I think it read the script and it sees a Google service provider and is connecting to Google now. And now, uh, so all you need to do is like Terraform apply. But a lot of people, the practice is like they will look at the plan first to make sure this is what they want before they applied it, because um, it could be a disaster, right? If you're working for something, maybe like in a company or something, so you don't want to do it without checking. So, yeah, so it's like uh, you get all the information about what you will be setting up. For example, uh, you know, um, uh, like, uh, the, you know, uh, this is the uh, firewall tag, so I tag it with the firewall. So, uh, oh, this is the firewall. So this is the, you know, the instance. You can see uh, it will be a Ubuntu instance, and you know, all this. Uh, it will be uh, the size will be this one, you know, and yeah, and the name and whatever is not very important. Oh, the region. If you have a preference, yeah, it will be there. And um, okay, so now we can finally apply it. So. Um, Okay, so, and it will ask you again, so save, right? So nobody will accidentally do it. So you can double check, triple check before you say yes, and then it will do it. So uh, I can show you what it does. It's actually now, it should be setting up an instance if I refresh it now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this, so that's the instance it's running. Uh, so it really depends on the startup script. If you install a lot of things in your startup script, so it, it, you know, it, it will be like this. But when you go to the IP address, it won't be running like uh, as what you expect. So uh, let's see if our little, tiny little um, Jupyter notebook, is it done yet? So we just go to the IP address. It's not done yet, so it's still installing things. So uh, we will leave that at the moment. So um, any questions? Maybe like I can clear some of the questions now, and then maybe yeah. Can we see the Terraform? Yeah, the Terraform script, right? Yeah. I'll show you it here. Maybe it's easier to have you know the white background here. It's, it's the same thing. And yeah, uh, is it again plus? Nope. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, is um, provider is Google, and you have to set up a lot of them. Actually, um, what I did is like somebody write a very uh, simple tutorial. I would say that um, online there's a lot of t tutorial about using Terraform with AWS, but not that much uh, with uh, GCP. So uh, I, I was struggling a little bit when I set it up. Uh, there is a guy who did a very simple tutorial, a blog post about all these basic things, but a lot of the, lead, the, the thing that what it actually means, you have to go to Google, and like Google, go, go to their uh, GCP, you know, they have a documentation, you read it and understand like what, what you can do with the API. And then you have to find the equivalent in the Terraform script to, you know, to plug it in. So, um, it's a bit of a, a you know a hard to start with, but once you start, it's like it's, it's, you understand the, the the logic and it's very easy. Yeah. So uh, I have set up a firewall as well because um, I just actually this firewall just allow everybody to go in. So, yeah, but I have to do it. Um, yeah. 
And this is, yeah, this is the instance. So uh, this is the same thing that, you know, when you type Terraform plan, you will see all these things. So yeah, it's, a, it's like a JSON format-ish thing, yeah. So uh, do you want to see the startup script? But this one is just download Docker, it's nothing fancy, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this one is very simple, right? I just, and I just, you know, use the the Docker, um, yeah, the, yeah, you know, nothing else. But I can show you the the real thing that I did before. Like, um, if I go to my repo, yeah, okay, there's a lot of things, right? Um, yeah, this one is the one that I used the uh, GPU, so. The start script should be more complex. Yeah, so it installed the uh, the driver for the, um, the uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, the driver for the accelerator, which is the, the GPU uh, thing that, um, yeah, so it's, you have to, you know, um, do all these. Uh, this one is, uh, you can find it on the uh, GCP um, documentation, so that one is not too hard. You just need to find like where it is and like how to get it. And install Docker and, yeah, this is more complicated because um, is, I, I, I've customized it and, you know, um, yeah. And this is my um, Docker image. If you're studying the same course as me, you can use it, actually, so yeah. <laughs> um, okay, it should be, okay, because it's fast this morning. Yay! Now we have a Jupyter notebook that's working. Yay! Um, <laughs> But uh, last time I forgot about it. Last time I forgot that, you know, uh, I haven't shown how to kill it. So I will show you that now. Because um, last time I was like, yeah, it's not working. And everybody's just like, yeah, and, this, and that's the end. But no. <laughs> okay, so Terraform destroy. It will kill it like um, should be. Yeah. So after you have done with it, of course you need to save your work and everything because everything will be destroyed. And of course, it will always ask you the second time. So make sure that you really want to destroy it. And yeah, but like you have to save all your work and you know, if you have an image, maybe you have to you know, go there and capture the image and all these. So yeah, it's, um, okay, it's destroying it. It's destroy everything, including the, um, the uh, firewall that I set up. So hopefully it's gonna be fine. I'm a bit nervous when it's taking so long. Maybe the internet is not good. <laughs> it's taking very long, oh, oh my God. I can't kill it now. Yeah, still. Oh yes, it's destroyed. Okay, now I, I don't have to worry about it. Because uh, like, cause if you, you are running a GPU instance, it could cost you a lot of money, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So okay, uh, maybe I'll show you like, now this one should have nothing and give me like a whatever error, like 404 or I can't find it or whatever. Uh, okay, so this slow. Yeah, so now it's gone. It's not there anymore. And um, yeah, this one become, you know, nothing. So it's destroyed. So everything seems to work perfectly. Uh, do you have any more questions? Because I have a lot of time left, so yeah. Yep. Uh, so here you created, uh, like you only launched the instance using Terraform and then you... So here you created the... Uh, an EC2 instance, or not EC2, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's instance, uh, the computing uh, instance, yeah. Using Terraform, uh, but then you, you install Docker and everything separately. Is Terraform also aware of services like Elastic Container Service on ECS or stuff like that, that it can also just launch up images without having to install Docker and all of that and be aware of them? Yeah, I believe it's integrating better with AWS. That's why uh, a lot of people are using it with AWS. Uh, I believe because... Um, uh, my, I have a friend, like she's a software developer. She's using it with AWS, and she said that, oh yeah, actually you don't have to. There's a thing in AWS, like as you said, like you don't have to do it in the startup script. It's already there, and you can just attach your image there. So uh, yeah, I believe AWS there's an advantage. So yeah, but I I did it because I you know I, I want to you know there's not enough tutorial there for GCPs. So I tried to you know challenge myself and help 
other people want to use GCP. So yeah. Uh, could you pass it? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the great talk and cool live demo. Uh, the question is about collaboration. So you mentioned in the beginning that it was yep. also useful for collaborating with other people. How can you let one person access it and still block it from everyone else? Uh, you mean the instance uh, for the instance that you can, you know, um, you can actually set up the permissions because. Uh, in GCP, you can set up the user groups and all this, so you can, you know, uh, set up who can access it and who have the rights to change it. And but uh, but in my in my slide, my point of like collaboration is like, for example, if you want to pass your work to your colleague, if like for example you pass your project to them, and they know that how to launch the instance again, like maybe after like after 10 years when you already left the company or whatever, and yeah, they have it written there. It's, it's not like you have to write a documentation, oh, now you click this and now you have to like type in there, but yeah, so that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, I've, I have a question, how do you persist data? I mean, also if you maybe have uh, different Jupyter notebooks and uh, yeah, how do you do that in, the, in Google? I have actually no idea. Uh, in Jupyter Notebook, like uh, the contents inside the Jupyter uh, Yeah, Notebook, no, right? let's say you have some embedding, you save it, and how do you, how uh, would you persist it? Would you attach a volume or something, or I don't know how this is done? Yeah, actually, um, because this one is queue the instance, right? So for the, if the, 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 you know, the volume is inside the instance, it would queue it as, mm -hmm. as well. So maybe you have to set up a pipeline to store it in another, you know, um, storage space, like, uh, the, the, you know, a, data warehouse or whatever like that suits your project so you can save it there or if it's just you know if if you're like me just using it for the gpu right and you can just download it and upload it again so yeah oh, okay all right yeah. Okay, I have one, if you don't yeah. mind. Um, so you were mentioning collaboration uh, before in one of your slides. Yeah. How would you see collaboration using this setup? So how would you use it to, to collaborate? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like, as I said, I can pass on my code, but also like people, you know, they can, you know, um, m like modify it on top of your work. For example, like, you know, actually I'm collaborating with that, um, that TA of that Coursera course because, you know, he built it a Docker image, you know, but I, you know, add things in, I modified it, and because everything is written in a code, it's very easy, you know, to change the setup. So I can, you know, um, instead of using just TensorFlow Jupyter Notebook, I use TensorFlow GPU version, um, you know, Jupyter Notebook. And, you know, if, of course he didn't do the Terraform part, but like if he use the Terraform to launch an instant without the GPU accelerator, I can change it to, you know, oh, add an accelerator and, you know, uh, run the driver in the startup script and all these things. So, um, yeah, it's like code uh, is very easy for uh, collaboration because, uh, yeah, of all these advantages. All right. Any more questions? It's okay if they, you know, um, we finish and have then lunch early. And sure. <laughs> I think it's better for yeah. everyone. So thank you very much for yeah. your talk. Yeah. Um, let's thank the speaker again.